Welcome to the NAS Lane Official Training Presentation. We want to say thank you for volunteering and giving of your time to work at NAS tournaments. Without our volunteers, these events would not be possible. Since 2002, NASP has provided a tournament format for student archers to compete with other archers. For most archers, the experience is not about winning, but about being a part of a team and having an opportunity to meet new friends. We are pleased that you have agreed to be a part of their experience. This training will provide the information needed to prepare you to be a NAS Lane official. We want the archers, coaches, and parents to have a positive experience. The key to meeting this goal is consistency in following all safety protocols, promoting fairness by applying the rules equally to everyone, and conducting the tournament in a timely manner. We hope you find this information helpful and enjoy your experience as a NAS volunteer lane official. In this training presentation, we are going to cover range layout, roles and responsibilities, whistle commands, equipment inspection, tournament operation, flight process and lane official duties, scoring process and lane official duties, and tips for creating a positive experience. In this section, we are going to learn how the layout of the range is designed to keep everyone safe during a NAS tournament. Beginning down range, first you will see the arrow curtain. This is the backstop for any arrows that may not hit the target. In front of the curtain, you will see the targets. To ensure proper alignment, the targets are set on the target placement line and centered on the X that marks the center of each lane. Moving uprange two yards or meters from the target placement line, you will see the target line. The scorecard boards are placed on the floor on this line anywhere within the archer's lane. We will discuss more about the scorecard boards again later in this presentation. The next line on the range is the 10 meter shooting line. A practice and the first three scoring ends are shot from this distance. At the start of each flight, the floor quivers will be on the 10 meter shooting line, two per lane. Floor quivers must remain on the shooting line. However, each archer's quiver may be placed anywhere within their half of the lane as long as it is in front of the archer. Continuing to move up range, the next line is the 15 meter shooting line. A practice and the next three scoring ends are shot from this distance. Each archer should move their own floor quiver to this shooting line after scoring their last end at 10 meters. After the 15 meter shooting line, we find the bow racks. The bow rack should remain centered between the 15 meter shooting line and the next line on the range, the waiting line. The waiting line is positioned four yards or meters behind the 15 meter shooting line. Archers remain behind this line before and after each shooting end while waiting for the next range signal. The next line on the range is the coaches line. This line of tape will be red at national and open championship tournaments. The three to four foot space between the coaches line and the next line on the range, the spectator line, forms coaches alley. At least one coach with a maximum of three coaches from each team shooting in the flight must be in coaches alley. Coaches must remain in this area and are not permitted downrange at any time. Only archers and tournament officials are permitted beyond the coaches alley. The final line on the range is the spectator line. All event spectators must remain behind this line throughout the event. At some national events, this line will be further delineated with a three foot pipe and drape. This section of the presentation will cover the roles and responsibilities of the various tournament officials. First, let's cover the responsibilities of the announcers. Announcers are generally located on a podium in the center of the range directly behind the coach's line. They provide range instruction and issue range signals and commands for the archers while monitoring the overall range. They also rely on range monitors to indicate when the range is ready for the next command. Announcers may also make special announcements when needed. Listed next are range monitors. The responsibility of this position is to monitor their area of the range and signal to the announcer when the range is ready for the next command. At national events, range monitors use green or red lights for signals. They should not be distracted and should be monitoring movement on the range. Range monitors do not have the duties of a lane official and must remain in their area they are assigned between the shooting line and the waiting line where they are most visible to the announcers. Now we will look at the responsibilities of a lane official. Lane officials are supervised by the team leader. Each lane official will be responsible for a set number of lanes. There should be extra lane officials assigned to each team to allow for a rotation of breaks. 
Lane officials make sure the range is a safe and enjoyable environment by making sure archers follow the rules and display good sportsmanship. They assist archers as needed with replacement arrows, equipment needs, and answering questions. As a lane official, you will also monitor and assist with scoring when needed. Lane officials should report any concerns or check with the team leader for any needed clarification. Any concern about an archer should be relayed through their coach. Lane officials must remember that archers may be addressed directly only if an immediate safety concern is present or if they request assistance. A few lane officials may be recruited by their team leader to assist with equipment inspections. Each team leader oversees a set number of lanes and the lane officials within that section. In addition to working as a lane official, this person will be the one team member responsible for equipment inspection. One or two lane officials may be asked by the team leader to assist with inspections. The team leader is the lane official's first point of contact for assistance in resolving issues. They may also communicate with the coaches if there are issues that need to be addressed with an archer and will contact the range manager to facilitate resolutions if needed. All team leaders should have a copy of the NAS national rules readily available. They will also hold morning briefings, checking lane official attendance, and coordinating lunch and break times, as well as relaying information to the lane officials from the range manager. Before going on break, team leaders must designate a replacement that is capable of performing equipment inspection and fulfilling the team leader responsibilities in their absence. The range manager oversees team leaders and the lane officials. The range manager works directly with the tournament director in the overall management of the tournament. The tournament director is the highest ranking officer on the range. The tournament director oversees all aspects of the tournament. In this section, we will review the whistle commands used by NASP. Five or more whistle blasts are given for the emergency signal. When this signal is given, something has occurred on the range that could indicate an emergency. Archers will immediately stop what they are doing. If the archer is at full draw, they should ease the string forward, remove the arrow from the string, and place it back in the quiver. Archers then hang their bows back on the bow rack and move behind the waiting line until further instructions are given. Two whistle blasts signals get bow. At this signal, archers walk to the bow rack, pick up their bow, and move to the shooting line. They place the cam of their bow on their toes on the target side foot with the riser facing the targets and wait for the next signal. One whistle blast signals shoot. Archers will begin the shooting process, shooting all five arrows within a two minute time frame. Once they have shot their last arrow, they must leave the shooting line place their bow back on the rack and move behind the waiting line for further instruction. Three whistle blasts signal, go get arrows. Archers will walk to the target, score, and retrieve their arrows. Carrying the arrows with both hands, one hand over the points and one below the veins, they will walk them back to the floor quiver and then return behind the waiting line. In this section, we will discuss the process used by NASP to ensure all equipment brought onto the range is compliant with the rules. Equipment inspection ensures fairness for all participants. At national tournaments, team leaders complete the equipment inspection for their area of the range. A second lane official may be asked to assist, but the same individual should inspect the equipment for each flight of the tournament if possible. Although inspection is the responsibility of the team leader, all lane officials should have a general knowledge of legal or illegal equipment. If a lane official does see a violation at any time, they should report it to the team leader. If an issue is discovered with a bow, the inspecting individual will locate the archer's coach and ask the coach to correct the issue. Tournament staff is prohibited from making any modifications or repairs to the archer's equipment. This is the responsibility of the coach. Once shooting begins, equipment must remain forward of the waiting line unless a repair or replacement is needed. The one exception is that the bow's weight may be adjusted after the first practice in only. The bow must be accompanied by a lane official while the adjustment is being made. Only one bow and one arrow are permitted for use in NASP, the original Genesis bow and the Easton 1820 NASP aluminum arrow. There are other models of the Genesis bow, but only the original Genesis is permitted in NASP. The other models of Genesis bows have cutouts in the riser, but the riser of the original Genesis bow is solid. First, let's go over the regulations for the Genesis bow. The sight window of the bow must be one solid color and free of any marks.
from the top of the grip up toward the upper limbs for six inches. Any mark or item that may be perceived as a sight mark must be covered by tape, paint, or permanent marker so that the face of the sight window is a solid color. Camo bows are permitted for use, but also must have the face of the sight window modified with tape or marker to be made a solid color. Custom painted bows are permitted for use if they meet all rule requirements. Bows may be personalized by painting or with stickers if the sight window remains mark free and the outside and inside of the sight window are kept free of any raised edges such as tape, stickers, or logos. The rest. Only the factory new archery products flipper rest may be used. The Teflon sleeve that covers the wire portion of the rest may be the original, absent, or replaced with shrink tubing like the original rest arm sleeve. The rest must be complete other than the option of the sleeve. The grip. The grip of the Genesis bow must be in place and unmodified. The grip may be painted for personalization. However, the use of paint with added texture or paint that dries with a multi-texture finish is disallowed. Wrist slings are permitted but may not be made from chain or cable. They may be mounted to the bow with a flexible yoke such as leather or rubber. The bolt that holds the yoke to the bow must be one inch or less in length with a head size no larger than three quarter inch by half inch. Wrist slings may be tied around the riser or through the hole just below the grip. Watch for any items on the cable or the cam that may be used as draw stops. These are not permitted. The cable guard slide must be black in color and be the original and unmodified. The wheel, cam, bearings, riser, and limbs must also be original and unmodified. The bowstring and cables may be aftermarket, but of the same approximate length and diameter. The string may not have sight markings. As you see here, someone has used whiteout to create a sight mark. No glove is a device that slips over the string. They may be one or two pieces, but must be applied as intended by the manufacturer. If a two piece, the top piece is small for one finger and the bottom piece is larger for two fingers. The pieces must be spaced as mentioned above. Two bottom pieces or two top pieces may not be used together. Heat shrink tubing may also be used as finger protection, but must cover the entire length of the serving above and below the arrow. Finger tabs, tape, finger gloves, or batting gloves may also be worn to protect the fingers. NASP has other approved shooting accessories for the archers. Arm guards, chest protectors, and finger slings are all approved by NASP for archers use. Eye patches, glasses, or glasses with tape on the lens are also approved for archer's use. Bow limbs may have tape on them, but the tape cannot wrap around both limbs. As shown to the right, morel poundage gauges are also approved by NAS for the archer's use. Closed-toed shoes must be worn by all archers while on the range. Crocs are acceptable as closed-toed shoes. Now let's discuss the regulations for arrows. Only the original unmodified Easton aluminum full length 30 inches 1820 arrows are permitted in NASP. Arrow knocks must be the Easton end knocks currently used by Easton in the production of the 1820 aluminum Genesis arrows. Arrow points must be the NASP standard currently used by Easton in the production of the 1820 aluminum Genesis arrows. They should be glue in, cone shaped, and weighing 60 grains. Arrow veins must be three soft plastic two and a half inch to three inch long and between four tenths of an inch and six tenths of an inch in height and attached to the shaft or wrap with a straight offset of approximately one and a half degrees. Veins may be of any brand, shape, or cut but must be within the listed dimensions. New Archery Products NAS Speed Fletch, a one-piece rubber fletching item, is also approved for use. Personal arrows must have veins marked for identification. The arrow shafts may be marked, crested, wrapped, or taped above the midpoint toward the knock for identification. The factory crest, including the NASP Genesis logo on the shaft of the arrow, must be visible and readable. The next section will cover tournament operation. We'll begin by discussing preparing for the flight. All lane officials should be at their assigned lanes 30 minutes prior to the start time of the first flight. As soon as the range is clear, the announcer will call for the archers to enter. Archers are already assigned a lane number and a left or right position. After the archers enter the range, 
they will proceed to hang their bows on the bow racks, place their arrows in their quiver, and place their scorecards on the scorecard boards. Scorecard boards should be positioned on the target line within the assigned lane. Archers should then attach the paper face to their target and return behind the waiting line for the flight to begin. Team leaders and their designees will perform the equipment inspection once the archers have placed their bows on the racks and their arrows in the quivers. We will now discuss the flight process. Flight should always start at the scheduled time. Starting any flight early could create problems. Once the scheduled flight time has arrived and all archers are behind the waiting line, the announcer will call for a green range and the range monitors will signal that their area is ready. The announcer will then give the two whistle signal to get bows. Archers, while all was walking, proceed to the bow racks, pick up their bows, and walk to their lane. Archers will straddle the shooting line, one foot on each side with no part of either foot touching the shooting line, then place their bow on toes of the target side foot, cam down, and the riser facing the target. The archer's body and equipment must remain in their half of the shooting lane. When all archers are in position and ready, the range monitors will show the green signal to the announcer. Once all portions of the range are green, the announcer will give the one whistle blast to signal shoot. Once the one whistle blast is given, archers will begin shooting. Archers have two minutes to complete each five arrow end. Once they have shot their fifth arrow, the archer must leave the shooting line and return behind the waiting line. Once all archers have returned behind the waiting line, the range monitors will signal to the announcer that the range is ready for the next range signal or command. Once all areas of the range are once again green, the announcer will give three whistle blasts to signal go get arrows. Archers will walk down to the targets, score, and retrieve their arrows. Once the arrows are pulled, the archers walk back, properly carrying their arrows and place them back into their quiver. The archers then go behind the waiting line to await the start of the next end. One practice end and three scoring ends are shot from the 10 meter shooting line. The archers then move their quivers back to the 15 meter shooting line. One practice end and three scoring ends are then shot from the 15 meter line, completing the flight. Let's now take a moment to further discuss when an archer should leave the shooting line. After shooting the last arrow, the archer must immediately leave the shooting line, rack the bow, and return behind the waiting line. If the archer's lane mate is in the process of shooting an arrow, the archer may wait until that single arrow is shot and then leave the shooting line. The archer may not stay on the line waiting for their teammates or lane mates to finish shooting all of their arrows. Now that the announcer has called the archers onto the range, let's take a closer look at a lane official's duties. The first issue you might encounter is an archer requesting to change lanes. Coaches are already assigned to a group of lanes for their team and can move archers within these assigned lanes if needed, but must indicate a lane change on the scorecards. The archer must still occupy the same side, left or right, of the lanes as was assigned to the team, not necessarily the archer, and each lane should still have archers from two different schools. Equipment. Once the equipment has been inspected, ensure that all bows and arrows remain on the range during the entire flight unless a bow has a malfunction or an arrow is damaged and must be replaced. In the event of an equipment failure, explain to the archer that he or she must remain on the shooting line while the bow is taken to the coach for repair. The lane official must accompany the bow while the repair is being made by the coach and then return the repaired bow to the archer. The most common equipment failure is broken arrow rest. The most common issue you will face while the archers are shooting is bounce out, dropped, or damaged arrows. Replacement of dropped arrows will be provided on any end, but replacement arrows for bounce outs are only provided on scoring ends. Dropped arrows will remain where they fall until the three whistle signal is given for go get arrows. When an archer raises a hand after a bounce out, dropped arrow, or finding a damaged arrow, the coaches should have a ready supply. After retrieving a replacement arrow from the coach, place it in the archer's quiver while the archer is not in the process of shooting an arrow. An arrow that skips off the floor and sticks in the target is scored where it sticks. If it fails to stick, it is treated as a bounce out and may be shot over. An arrow that reaches the target line without hitting the target is considered a shot arrow, scored a zero. If it does not reach the target line, it is a dropped arrow. Finally, keep an eye on the quivers as archers leave the shooting line, reminding them to shoot any arrows accidentally left behind. 
Once the archer has crossed the waiting line, they may not return to the shooting line and the remaining arrows will be scored as zeros. Unfortunately, one issue you will need to be prepared for is lane crowding. Each lane is 60 inches or 5 feet wide. Each archer is entitled to 30 inches of that lane. All portions of the archer's body and their equipment must remain in their 30 inch section of the lane throughout the shooting process. The center and the edges of each lane are clearly marked. The floor quiver or any portion of the archer's body cannot cover, be placed on, or extend beyond those marks. If an archer or their equipment encroaches upon another lane, locate the archer's coach and explain the situation and the rule. Ask that they correct the behavior. Inform them that failure to do so is grounds for disqualification. If not corrected, inform the team leader. If the archers are shooting and their quiver is in the other lane but neither archer is complaining, it may simply be moved into the correct position while the archers are scoring. If the archers are not shooting, the lane official may ask an archer to reposition the floor quiver if it is not in front of the archer, on the shooting line, or is way beyond their portion of the lane. Lane officials are not responsible for adjusting every quiver and should not hold up a flight while straightening quivers. Lane officials should monitor the archers to ensure all bows are being kept vertical while knocking arrows. Bows that are not kept vertical could interfere with a neighboring archer and cause a safety issue. Locate the archer's coach, explain the situation and the rule, and ask that they correct the behavior. Inform them that failure to do so is grounds for disqualification. If not corrected, inform the team leader. Another issue to be aware of is the high or low draw. If an archer is high drawing, which is drawing the bow back while the arrow is pointed above the top of the curtain, or low drawing, which is drawing the bow back while the arrow is pointed below the target, locate the archer's coach, explain the situation, and ask that the archer correct their draw process. If not corrected, this could be grounds for disqualification. If it is not corrected, notify the team leader to issue a warning to the coach. Unusual Incidents There are occasions where an archer may get sick or have an incident while shooting. Safety is the number one concern, so take the necessary precautions to make sure the archer or other archers do not slip in any fluids. The next concern would be to remain calm and minimize any embarrassment for the archer and to notify the team leader. The good news is the facility takes care of the actual cleanup. Solo Archers and Lane Mates in instances where there may be only one archer in a lane, a lane official will call and record the scores for that archer. Solo shooters may be combined where possible to promote integrity, but will not be moved from other areas of the range to fill in lanes. Solo archers occupying a lane must remain in their assigned left or right side while shooting. Two archers occupying a lane should be from different schools. However, in instances where two archers from the same team do occupy the same lane, a lane official will oversee the scoring of those archers. Moving Quivers After the third end at 10 meters, the announcer will ask the archers to move their floor quivers back to the 15 meter shooting line. Lane officials need to observe the archers returning from their targets to make sure they move their quivers as requested. If there are empty lanes, the lane officials will move those quivers to the 15 meter line. Centering the Targets Targets should be positioned so that the front edge is touching the target placement line and the bullseye is centered over the X. Sometimes lane officials may need to reposition the targets to center if they get moved. However, flight should not be delayed due to lane officials straightening the targets. Changing target faces during a flight. If an archer requests for a target face to be changed, or if a lane official believes a target face should be changed, notify the team leader. Both archers and both coaches need to agree to the change. If they all agree, lane officials will place a new target face directly over the old one in the exact same position. Replacing a target. Occasionally, a target may get shot out, causing the arrows to pass through it. If this happens, notify a team leader. When possible, targets should only be replaced between flights. The team leader may decide to place another target behind the damaged target to get through the flight. If for some reason a target must be replaced during a flight, both archers and both coaches must agree before the target is replaced. Despite NAS's focus on promoting good sportsmanship and honesty, cheating does occur. 
Please remember to monitor the archers closely, especially during the scoring process. Attempts to cheat include using disallowed equipment, improper calling out or bubbling of an arrow's value, or erasures of anything on the scorecard. Only lane officials may use erasers. If an archer is suspected of wrongdoing or caught attempting to cheat, locate the team leader immediately and provide all details to them. Unsportsmanlike behavior. Archers, coaches, volunteers, and spectators are expected to respect each other. Acts of unsportsmanlike conduct or behavior considered disruptive, unsafe, offensive, or otherwise inappropriate may result in a disqualification and or expulsion of the archer, coach, or observers, depending on the severity of the action. The team leader should be notified immediately. A few examples of unsportsmanlike conduct include disturbing another archer with excessive touching or talking, Failure to follow the lane official's direction, which applies to archers and coaches. Physical or verbal abuse of any person at the event. Intentional or repeated bumping of another archer or the archer's bow. Encroaching beyond the archer's assigned 30 inches in the shooting lane. Ignoring the left versus right assignment in a shooting lane. And finally, any use of vulgar or otherwise offensive language, which includes that on t-shirts and banners. We will now review the scoring process. First, we need to take a look at the scoring rings on the target and how to determine an arrow's score. The value of the scoring rings from the outside ring in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, anything outside of the rings is scored a 0. Determining an arrow's value. If the shaft of the arrow is touching or cutting the line, the arrow is given the higher ring value. If the shaft is not touching the line, then the score is the lower ring value. If the arrow has simply torn the paper face into the line, as shown here, the lower value is awarded. Next, let's review the scoring format. The first section at the top of the scorecard is for the 10 meter distance. The three rectangles represent the three scoring ends shot at 10 meters. The five lines in each rectangle represent the five arrows shot per end. The second section is for the 15 meter distance with the same configuration as the 10 meter section. The check boxes on the right side are for the archer to verify the score on their own card each end. It is the responsibility of the archer to verify the score and check the box. If a card is turned in at the end of the flight without verification, it will be considered verified. The next section provides a space for the archer to bubble in their assigned shooter number. In the bottom section, a name and shooter number may be handwritten or a label may be attached with the information. The next two lines are used for the archer's signature and the lane mate's signature as a witness that the card is complete. NASP has developed a scoring protocol designed to promote integrity and minimize confusion for the archers. First, Archer A will pick up the scorecard board and approach the target. Archer A will call and score Archer B's arrows without touching the arrows, while Archer B observes. Once Archer A has called and scored all five of Archer B's arrows, Archer A will hand the scorecard board to Archer B. Archer B will then check each arrow's score and place a check in the box next to each end indicating that they agree with the scores as recorded. Archer B will then call and score each of Archer A's arrows without touching them. Once Archer B has scored all five of Archer A's arrows, Archer B will hand Archer A the scorecard board for review. Once Archer A has verified their score, the scoreboard will be placed back on the target line. Archer A will then step behind the target line while Archer B pulls his or her arrows. Once Archer B has pulled their arrows and gone behind the target line, Archer A may pull their arrows. Archers will carry their arrows back to the floor quiver and return behind the waiting line. All arrows must be scored and verified before any arrows are touched or pulled. Arrows should be pulled one at a time and placed on the floor. Once all five arrows are pulled, the archer will pick them up, even them up by tapping the points on the top of the target, then carrying them with both hands back to the floor quiver, one hand covering the points and the other hand just below the veins. After the last scoring end and both archers have finished signing their own card and their lane mate's card, 
They remain at the target area until their cards are collected by a lane official. Archers will then remove the paper face from their target. They may keep it or throw it away, collect their equipment, and leave the range. Now let's discuss your duties as a lane official during scoring. When the archers walk to the targets after the three whistle signal, lane officials follow them down range and stop at a location that allows them to see the archers in their area of responsibility. While there, you'll monitor the archers to ensure that they are following the proper scoring protocol. If not, explain the proper protocol and they ask the archers to follow that procedure. Sometimes, archers have trouble determining the value of an arrow or agreeing on its score. If this is the case, they will raise their hand for the lane official to assist. The lane official will make the determination. On a very rare occasion, arrows will stick into the back of another arrow, which is called a Robin Hood, and remain in the target. If this happens, the arrow is scored the same as the arrow that is stuck in the target. Arrows that deflect off another arrow are scored where they stick in the target. Making corrections on a scorecard. Only the lane officials can correct errors on or make any changes to a scorecard. Archers are not permitted to have erasers on the range, so they rely on the lane officials to make corrections. If asked to erase marks on a scorecard, make sure both archers agree that the marks to be erased are mistakes. Then erase the mistakes completely, make the correction, then turn the scorecard over to note the correction on the back and sign it. If a correction is made on the third arrow, line 3, of the second end at 10 meters, mark on the back, N2, L3, the correction made, and then sign or initial as shown in the example. After both archers are satisfied that arrow values have been accurately recorded, scores are considered final. Pulling arrows. Archers may request assistance pulling arrows out of the target. If called to assist, make sure both archers are behind the target line and look toward the archers while pulling. Collecting scorecards. Archers may not take a scorecard beyond the 10 meter shooting line. It is recommended to have a lane official stand near the 10 meter line supervising to prevent the archers from leaving the range with their scorecard. Disqualification may occur if a scorecard leaves the range. If a scorecard leaves the range beyond the shooting line for any reason during a flight, contact the team leader and provide the information to them. While collecting scorecards, double check for completion, two signatures on each card, and that the shooter number is bubbled in. If a signature is missing and the archer has already left the range, the scorecard will be considered approved and final. Hand the scorecards from your lanes to your team leader. All scorecards will be collected by a designated person and transported to the scoring room. A couple of safety issues to remember during the scoring process is while scoring, the archers must remain on their feet. Knees on the floor or sitting is not permitted for safety reasons. Kindly remind them, up on your feet please. Also, both archers may approach the target to score but one archer must remain behind the target line while the other archer pulls their own arrows. Replacing target faces for the next flight. Replace target faces for the next flight after both archers have left the target. Team leaders will direct the lane officials to either change out the target faces or simply place one in front of each target to allow the archers in the next flight to pin the new faces on their own targets. The target face should be positioned so that the bottom is contacting the floor or as close as possible depending on the targets used. The target nails that support the target face should be several inches in from each corner on the target face but not touching the scoring ring. Some archers have trouble pushing the nails in so lane officials should watch for raised hands during this time. There should be four target nails in each target face, one in each corner, and at least four spare nails on top of the target. Here are some additional tips for creating a positive experience. NAS recommends that you review all available online lane official training, scoring protocol, and safety information prior to the tournament. Also, please remember that there are spectators behind you. Please try to limit blocking their view. It's acceptable and encouraged to place a chair in line with the bow racks for the range volunteers. Even while sitting, lane officials must remain vigilant for any archers in need of assistance or any safety concerns. While waiting for a flight to begin or end, lane officials should remain near the bow racks and away from the shooting line so that the range monitors and the announcers can easily see if the range is clear. While archers should never be left unattended while scoring, lane officials should return behind the shooting line once their area is cleared. 
It's also recommended that you keep a copy of the rules handy. A copy is also kept at the announcer's podium if needed for reference. Please notify the team leader if you needed to leave the range outside of the assigned breaks so that all lanes may be covered consistently. Extra pencils, erasers, rubber bands, water, etc. are available at the announcer's podium. Lane officials should always have a pencil and an eraser accessible. Distractions for the archers should be kept at a minimum, so remember to keep conversations and communications with others at a low volume. While there is time between flights to check text, emails, and voicemails, archers need our full attention while shooting and scoring. Cell phone use during a flight is not permitted. Cell phones must be kept on silent or vibrate settings throughout the tournament. If you must use your phone during a flight, please step off the range. Interactions with the archers before and during the tournament are on an as-needed basis only. Lane officials are prohibited from correcting shooting form, shooting issues, or coaching archers in any way. As stated earlier, communication with the archers is only as needed. Archers may be addressed directly only if an immediate safety concern is present or they request assistance. In cases when an archer's actions are improper but aren't posing an immediate safety risk, lane officials or the team leader should find the archer's coach, explain to the coach the subject of concern, and ask the coach to correct it. Lane officials are prohibited from coaching, giving advice, or attempting to relax the archers. Physically touching any archer is prohibited. Upon arrival, notify the team leader of any breaks needed throughout the day, such as coaching your team or watching your child compete. NASP rules prohibit lane officials from working in an area of the range with a team or archers they have direct association with. And finally, always maintain a professional and positive attitude. Once again, on behalf of NASP, we express our heartfelt gratitude to all of our volunteers. You truly are changing lives one arrow at a time.